friends. I'm back doing this video today for you, and this one is going to be on white clover trifolium repens. A lot of people don't talk about white clover. They just mow them over, and they don't think anything of it. So I left this huge patch here. I didn't mow it, just so I could come out and do this video. And uh, we're going to make a tea. I'm going to go inside and make a tea out of this, and I'm going to show you a few things. So white clover... Uh, the leaves, the stems, the flowers, and the seeds, they're all edible. Uh, they boost the immune system, and uh, they support uh, someone that has a, a fever, a cold, a cough, congestion, you know, like headaches. Also good for uh, joint pain. It's traditionally used to purify and cleanse the blood. The extracts that are made with the leaves are used for gout. Here's another one that's used for gout, and these the leaves. So I'm going to show you how to identify them also. Um, possibly can help with hot flashes and heat stroke because this is considered a cooling herb. It cools the body down. So you can eat the leaves raw or cooked as like a spinach substitute. You can dry them and add them to your baking. It has uh, the flowers, it has a vanilla. If you ever get right down and smell these or pick a whole bunch and smell them, they smell like vanilla vanilla flavor so the flowers are edible the seeds are edible um, when they're dry they're ground into um, a flower um, also other names that is known as uh, dutch clover and ladino clover <laughs> i've never heard of those before but that's all new to me those other names because we don't really pay a whole lot of attention to white clover years ago I'd asked my teachers, I said, what do we do with white clover? She says, eh, we don't really do much with white clover. And the reason why I know why she said that was because there's not a whole lot of literature on it. Um, red clover there is, but uh, red clover takes the spotlight over the white clover because they're bigger and they're prettier and they're brighter. So it's one of the reasons why it's not really that attractive and talked about. So the tender young leaves as a nibble anytime, best in the spring. The flowers as a sweet tree and a garnish for salads or cooked in vegetable dishes, um, used fresh or dried as a, as a tea. So I got a tea brewing right now. And uh, the white clover was used by the Cherokee Iroquois and the Mohegan Indians amongst, among others, as the ones that I found. Uh, the white clover has a substance that can counteract scrofolia, a form of tuberculosis. Uh, affect, that usually affects the lymph nodes, um, especially the neck, that most mostly children are, are common in children. So it cleanses boils, sores, wounds, uh, heals diseases of the eyes. So you can make an eye wash with it um, as a tonic or and take the extract of the leaves. You can also make an ointment for gout and you can place it right on wherever there's pain. Um, so also make a tea for um, fever and Bright's disease. Um, that's another one the tea comes in handy for. So also um, you can make a hair rinse for this as like a hair wash, strengthens the hair. The bees are, the bees love it because they have a little bit of pink in them. Let me see if I can find one. So these are starting to dry out, but see there's a little pink in there and the bees are attracted to that, the colors. So that they're attracted to um and plus they smell so good like you really have to go outside and really try these before you mow them over smell them make a tea out of it um you can make an iced tea or you can make a hot tea um iced tea you would just steep it and then put it in your fridge cool it off and have it like the next day or in the next few hours you can do like a half a cup of clover to like maybe a quart jar or um big tablespoon for me if you're just making a coffee cup worth of tea um, smaller amount of tea so this is um the tea really helps with stomach issues and nauseous you know if someone's nauseous but i wouldn't recommend giving it to someone's pregnant because i want to tell you why well it's also high in vitamin a c k uh, magnesium calcium potassium iron uh, high in protein it's about 20 25 percent worth of uh, protein which is worth its weight in gold there the white flower has a bit of uh, like I said the pink in it that's a, um, and it's also the bees and other insects it helps to pollinate the, for clover honey 
So I think people have all heard that, you know, clover honey is really good honey. It's great for a lot of different things, especially the immune system. Um, so it's very high in protein for humans and animals. It helps improve uh, blood circulation. We all need that. <laughs> we all need that. So cautions not to be used by people that are taking blood thinners because that's what it does. It helps to um, people that have are already on blood thinners. Probably not a good idea to be drinking this also. Um, white clover is usually, like I said, not talked about because red clover takes over, you know, the spotlight on it. And uh, also this was used for making perfumes. Perfumes and uh, spiders and it, it, ward, it wards off spiders and venomous snake bites. Snakes, you know, the ones that bite. <laughs> well, I don't think we have those around here, but you know, you never know. If people get bit by things and they have allergic reactions, it's always good to have something handy right by to use. Could save your life. Um, so farmers use um, clover, red clover, um, white clover, as um, a cover crop for the nitrogen fixer. It also helps with soil erosion. Uh, this, so the stems, I don't know if the stems are really, well, the stems don't seem to be, so the red clover, the stems are pretty hairy. These are not, these are pretty flat. And they have like a star shape. It, they're really small. So it's hard to really see. You have to get a magnifying glass to really get down and see them. So, um, you want to look for the chevrons, and chevrons are these little, I'll have some pictures too. You see the white arrows in there? See how it looks like an arrow and it's white and it points out? Those are called chevrons. So when you find those, that'll sh pretty much, it's one of the identifications of the, of the clover. So you want to soak the leaves and the flowers for about an hour and then you cook them and it helps to be more digestible. You don't have to, you can just cook them, but they say that's, you know, it's a good idea to do that. So you can make this into uh, a hot tea or a cold tea and we're going to go in the kitchen and I'm going to show you how to do this one. But we're also going to do the red clover one. I'm going to do another short video um, on the red clover. And I'll just take a look at a few of these. I'll have a lot of pictures so you can see up close what they look like. Like these are fairly new. I haven't really been here too long, maybe a week, and they popped up, like really quickly popped up. So we'll see you on the next video. We're gonna do the red clover, which is gonna be attached to this one. They're just two short little videos because red clover and white clover, I mean, there's a lot of medicinal values to it. There's not a lot of edible type of dishes. I'm going to do a stir fry up on the red clover uh, flowers because they're bigger and I have a little bit more to work with. These guys are pretty small. It would take an awful lot to uh, make a uh, dish out of it. So we'll just do the tea out of it for right now. So we'll see you um, in the next video. And uh, enjoy. Peace. So red clover is the trifolium pretense. You could probably look up that pronunciation and say it way better than I can. <laughs> That's the Latin name. So this is a perennial, just like the white clover. They'll keep coming back if they're not, the roots aren't dug out. Um, and it's in the legume family. I totally forgot to say that probably with the white clover because of the legume family. Sometimes it can cause um, gas with some people because some people are not good with um, like cashews or in the legume family. Um, 
you know, there's a lot of foods that are in a legume family that people um, high di have digestive issues. So just uh, be cautioned on that with a red clover. Uh, the pervinio, it's a perennial herb and it's used for asthma, whooping cough, cancer, gout. Here's your gout again. Menopause symptoms. Um, but remember, I'm going to talk about that for a moment with the menopause symptoms. Hey, you don't want to be drinking this if you're pregnant. <laughs> so, uh, you, um, what I'm saying about menopause symptoms is it, they say it's for low estrogen. It helps with bone loss. Um, and when you're getting into somebody that has low, uh, estrogen, this is a great herb for that. But if you're estrogen dominant, you do not want to be drinking this as a tea or eating any parts of it because it, this acts as a um, mimics uh, fat phytoestrogens. That's, I'm trying to spit that out. <laughs> so not a good herb if you are already estrogen dominant. Um, can actually have, make you have more hot flashes. You'll know when you drink it and you start having some symptoms and you're having uh, more hot flashes or other things going on that you are totally different, you know, like um, the breasts will start to hurt some, you you can feel it in your ovaries, just eliminate it and those symptoms will go away. So it helps with uh, um, prostate cancer, decreases cholesterol, and also supports heart health. So red clover again, um, it, it, uh, it acts like an estrogen that can affect the hormone balancing during pregnancy or, or breastfeeding. So eliminate it even during bre bre uh, breastfeeding as well. Don't take any chances. So sensitive conditions such as breast cancer, uterine cancer, ovarian cancer, endometriosis, and uterine fibroids. So just be on the cautious side. Um, if you're gonna look for these, how you're gonna identify this is you're looking for these little chevrons and these are really easier to see on the red clover as it, the um, white clover is a little harder because they're so tiny but these guys are easier to identify obviously in this remember this is our state flower red clover is Vermont state flower I don't know who came up with that one but it's a pretty cool beautiful flower maybe because farmers you know <laughs> spread it all along their fields as a nitrogen uh, source I don't know maybe because it's so abundant around I guess I didn't look that part up um, so the stems and the leaves are opposite, similar to basil. The red clover um, can thrive in low nitrogen, poorly drained soils. The flowers eaten as a sweet nibble, raw or used in a tea, or dried and ground into the baked goods. Doesn't really smell as, I don't smell any lavender, vanilla, lavender, <laughs> vanilla flavoring in this one at all as I did the, the white clover. But you could drink this as a tea. Um, the tender leaves and stems and tips can be eaten raw or cooked and only eaten in small quantities due to, the, remember the low digestibility. It's hard to digest it as much as if you don't soak it and cook it. So um, eating it raw, just eat a little, very little bit of it. Not gonna hurt you, but. Um, the young leaves of red clover eaten raw, but can cause a burning sensation in your mouth. So you don't want to be eating too much of it, probably because of the oxalic acids in them. Uh, the most commonly used part is the flower. Obviously, we know that the roots are edible and um, they have eaten the roots, but you have to boil them and put a little baking soda in there to get the bitterness out. But they are edible. They are a staple food. So if you're starving, you definitely could dig these up and eat them. And... Let's see, I'm trying to think what else I wanted to talk about. Um, it's known as a rebel food because it's so abundant. Let me see if I can find one so I can identify and show you some cool things about it. Mm. See the little red, or it's a little bit red right here. That's another sign. And also because it's hairy, that's another sign of, um, that's what you're looking for. It's a round, it's not a square stem. Let's see if I can pull one of these off. And it should be hollow. Some of them are hollow, some of them are not. Let me see if I can even rip one off here. They have a hollowness. Yeah, see? Very tiny, but it is hollow inside the stem. 
So really, I think red clover is pretty easy to identify. They got these pretty little veins, like these red veins on there. That's how you can identify them. And then the chevrons, which are on the leaves. They look like uh, check marks or a V, kind of like a, a V that goes on the leaves. And they have three leaves, usually they have three leaves. Um, high in vitamin C and A, calcium, chromium, magnesium, niacin, tryptophan, phosphorus, uh, potassium, thiamine, rich in isoflavonoids, and protein. That's why it's called the rebel food, because it's high in protein. Um, it also has, let's see, I just dropped it here. Um, pain relieving properties so it can help with fevers um trying to remember all my my things i'm going on here it's antibacterial um it's also one of the used mostly remedies for kids that have skin problems like eczema psoriasis ac acne teenage acne i would just make a tea and they can rinse their face with it or wherever the eczema is. Um, also good for children with weak immune systems as a tea and a nerve tonic or a sedative for people that are, have complete exhaustion that can't sleep. Also used in, was, was used in treatment for um, AIDS patients, probably because of the immune ability and the antibacterial, antiviral type properties. So we're gonna do a tea with the red clover also, and we're gonna look at the difference between the white clover and the red clover, and then we're gonna boil some of the leaves, like spinach, like these leaves are way bigger. There's more here than there is in the, the white clover. So I'm not gonna do the white clover. I'm just gonna do the red clover. And so we're gonna see what that tastes like, and we're gonna check it out and go from there. Um, also, I want to make, I'm going to make some of these tops, like I do the dandelion tops, I'm going to make fritters. So we're going to make some little fritters out of these guys, and I bet these are going to be yummy. <laughs> so we're going to take some of these tops, we're going to dip them in a batter, you can dip them in any kind of batter you want. I'm going to fry them up like I do the dandelion ones. So that's going to be that. So we're going to go in the kitchen, and we're going to do a little bit of fun work, we're going to taste some things. I'm gonna go harvest some more of these nice and fresh leaves and uh, we're gonna make some fritters and we're gonna do a little spinach and we're gonna make some tea. I think those are the three fun things I think that we're gonna make today. And we're gonna go teach you how to make a few things. You should do these with projects with kids. These are fun, kids learn so much and they never forget. So let me show you. See, this is partially open. This stem is really tender like it snaps right off really easy that's what you want to pick you want to pick these really tender ones so when they get to a different stage like like this they're a little harder like look at uh, they're just not going to be that good to eat see how they snap like that so i definitely would find these that are more almost open like these are partially open kind of what I would be looking for that's what I'm gonna I'm gonna steam that up boil it and try that so go out there and try your red clover this is Vermont state flower it's a very beautiful flower it's easy to identify you can do it with the kids go pick a handful of the tops bring them in dip them in a batter make some fritters and stir fry up a little bit or I would say um, not, well you can stir fry, I might do a stir fry too, and I'll do a steam. I like to do steams and stir fries to show you different ways of eating, you know, some of your wild edibles. Alright guys, that's it. I'm gonna head in the kitchen and we'll see you there. Peace. Hey my friends, I'm back and we're doing the red clover and the white clover today. I'm actually just making the white clover tea and I'm going to show you the difference between the white and the red clover tea. We're, I already did a boil on the uh, leaves and the flower, uh, the leaves and the stems and right now these are the red clover 
uh, tops that I'm making a, um, I'm gonna grab a fork out here. Uh, these are the flowers. And I got a jump start on it because I wanted to make sure my pan wasn't too darn hot. Always seems like I have it too heated by the time I get the video started. So these are the red clover tops. And all I did was you can take any kind of batter that you have, throw them in. Aren't they pretty? Throw them in the batter. Dip them whatever you want to use. This is coconut. Or not coconut, I'm sorry. This is... Um, almond milk or you could just use water um, if you don't have milk or anything to use you just mix your batter with water because all you're doing is just making a batter for these red clover and I'll tell you right now when you bite into one of these they are the sweetest little fritters sweeter than the dandelion fritters they're really really good so take a good look at those <laughs> So I'm going to pull these out and then I'm going to throw some more in and I'll just talk about these for a minute. Um, I like using tongs. They just work so much better than trying to dig them out with a fork or something else. So I only use the, I use the, I use coconut oil to cook these in. If you want to use something else, you can use something different. Um, try not to put them on too much, too high of a heat, especially in your uh, cast iron pan. You can use a non-stick pan. Usually I like using the non-stick pans for the uh, fritters because they tend to have a habit to stick to everything. So I'm going to do this and then I'm going to open one up and show you how pretty it is. So dandelions are cool too. I like doing the dandelions. So what's the benefit of doing these? Well, they're just fun and I think the kids would learn their red clover and their white clovers by doing this. You're not going to make fritters out of the white clover. You can, but they're so darn small. You could clump a whole bunch together or make fill this up and throw your red and white clover on there and make a really pretty, you know, big huge pancake. I don't know, just throwing things out there. I mean, I'm all about teaching the kids because kids really, um, they enjoy, you know, making stuff that they can find. And this gets them outdoors where we need the sunshine. Um, so those types of things. So I'm going to take these out and I'm going to, they probably could cook a little bit longer. If you want them crispier, you can leave them in, but I wanted to just throw a few in just as a demonstration. Just like with the, when I do the dandelions. So these are fun. <laughs> it's always, it's good to find fun things to do with the kids, especially when it's cooking in the kitchen. It teaches them skills. These are fun skills. Now, I want to touch a little bit on what I had talked about before. And the reason why I'm putting them over here is because I think my stove's unlevel. I don't even know how that happened, but it's a little unlevel and I see the, the grease has gone to that end. So we're just gonna, we're gonna work with it. We're working with it. Um, so I'm talking about the estrogen. Um, when Women, people are going to disagree with me with a lot of this, but I've done a lot of research on it because I'm one myself, can be an estrogen dominant person. Uh, I cannot eat soy and I cannot eat flaxseed. If I have any soy whatsoever, um, I literally will have reactions. I will have the pains in the ovaries. I'll have the wicked hot flashes like hours after having something like that has soy in it or tofu or flaxseed in it. And sometimes your action isn't until the next day, but you really, you can tell. And the way we, we move our estrogen is through peeing it out and uh, through our bowels. So if those aren't working properly and you are an overload of estrogens, you might want to make sure that those things are working properly. So red clover is like having tofu or these things that mimic phytoestrogens. It's not that it's going to make your boobs grow. Otherwise, I'd be making a ton of money off of red clover. <laughs> and uh, that's just not what's happening. So um, you don't want to get anything that is um, estrogen mimicking, which can cause you to have an overload. We're not looking for an overload. We're just looking for healing properties. So if that's you, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and eat all of these because I know darn well that it's very sensitive person that it will definitely uh, trigger a reaction. 
So on the earth side, be careful with that. Um, as we get older, uh, we our progesterone falls off, and um, as we're no longer, as we're going through menopause, no longer able to have children, uh, we have an overload of more estrogen and less progesterone. So by eating the foods that are causing you to mimic those phytoestrogens, um, it can be detrimental to your health. It can cause fibroids, it can cause cancers, it can cause tumors, because there's an imbalance. So we are always striving for that balance. So remember that. Do not eat foods that mimic phytoestrogens. And people have argued with me over and over again saying that's not what happens. Well, let me tell you what, it does happen. And anyone that has uh, gone to the doctor and they told you to go drink lots of soy milk because you need estrogen um, and you are doing that and you're still having the symptoms, listen to your body. Absolutely listen to your body. And you can always call me and I'll also talk you through it. So what you want to do is get supplements and things like Dong Kwai, things that help with uh, balancing out your um, your estrogen, your progestions. You want to, uh, Wall DM creams, you can use those. Um, I didn't mean to get into a whole estrogen progesterone thing. Same with men also. Um, you know, you don't want to overdo it. So these are fun things to do with the kids. I think kids are pretty safe, you know, they're not to worry about over estrogen progesterone. You're not eating them every day. You're just actually trying this just because it's fun. Uh, it's staple food. Just like dandelions, you're only doing that, what, once a year? Um, unless you are on a tight budget, and then you're using your wild edibles to survive. And literally, this is where we're at today, folks. We're in a survival mode, and we need to learn these foods. I give these, I bring these videos to you for free. So, learning them. There's lots of other videos that you can find on the web. Well, there is and there isn't. There's some that are like five minute clips that will give you like five minute clips. You know, here's red clover. This is what it's good for. Well, how do you cook it? How do you eat it? Well, I'm going to show you how to cook and eat it and show you different ways. So while these are cooking, let's show you this. So here is the, I'm going to use my hands because nobody else is eating it. Here's the red clover um, that I boiled up. And these are the stems. See how nice and tender they are? I just touch them and they fall apart like an asparagus again. And they're really good. I did taste it. It was very, very good. I've had them before. I remember a um, long time ago. I can't remember, but it's been such a long time since I tried them because of the estrogen part issue. Um, but the, as the leaves get bigger, now you see they can get a little tougher, but that's why you boil them a little bit longer. So there's some staple food here. This is what you're looking for. This is what you want. See the little tiny flowers that have not opened yet? I just cooked those up in with it also. So you can eat those. I tried them. They're pretty good. Um, as the stems get bigger, they get a little tougher. So stick with, you know, the smaller, tender ones like I showed in the video. And here is the fritters. You can even see them. They kind of look translucent inside the, the little fritter thing. The rest of them are cooking. Then we're going to, I'm going to turn around here and I'm going to show you the, uh, get my mess out of the way here. I'm going to show you the rest of what I've made. So I made the tea. We're going to, we're going to plate these up. Let's get these fritters out of here and then we'll cut one up and take a look at it. It's kind of fun. Or we can just shut this off. So I already have some that I already finished. So I know I sometimes can rant along some things, but I'm also, you know, letting the stuff cook while I'm talking a little bit with you. It gives you a chance to just um, learn a few other things that probably I wasn't going... I mean, I don't have a script here. I just talk from experience and things that pop into my head that I feel like, oh, maybe they might want to know this or that maybe they might want to know that. Um, definitely leave comments. If you guys want to leave comments and if you have questions, if you you know, something else you want to know or see, let me know. Um, go on my YouTube channel. It's vermontpureherbs.com. Oh, no, that's my website. <laughs> Vermontpureherbs. Sorry, I'm only human. Vermontpureherbs.com is my website. And uh, Vermont Pure Herbs on YouTube or my Facebook or Instagram is all Vermont Pure Herbs. I'm also on Telegram now. I don't get on there as much, but I'm trying to post things on there as I go. 
So um, here we go. I'll just flip this around so you can see without the mess in the way. So here we go. You see these teas? I did these earlier. This one is the red clover and this is the white clover. You see the difference? And I did taste them. This is very, very, they're both very sweet. This does have a vanilla aftertaste. It's very good. And this is the red clover tea um, that has a slight, has like sweet kind of taste to it. I really liked it. It was not bad at all. Um, your stir fry of your leaves. And also, let me get a clean fork. I'm glad my forks are right here. And then these are the little flowers inside. Kind of cool. Let me find one I can show you a little bit better of a picture. These are the red clover. Can you see a little close up on that? They're kind of neat. Um, very edible. Cut that one in half. So you can see the flowers inside. Also on here, I wanted to show you, so you can see the purple on these coming through. A little purple flower. This is the red clover. So you get a bunch of little fritters going on here. Also in here, there's these little white seeds. They're not bugs. <laughs> At first I thought they were, but they're not bugs. You see them? These are the little seeds. Those are not bugs. Um, they're seeds. At first I was like freaking out. I'm like, no. It's like, oh yeah, that's right. Those are the seeds. Because you have your little flower heads here. Watch. See the flower heads? These are not bugs. These are the seeds that come from these are going to sprout and turn into a big red clover. So don't let that scare you. Kind of cool. And I guess that's all I got to talk about. So just letting you know, um, red clover is a staple, a wild food, an edible, a medicinal, has a lot of properties. It does so many different things. It's great for the kids. Remember, I could rinse my hair with this. That wouldn't bother me with the estrogen type stuff. Although, I don't know, I'd have to try it. I've never really done it as a hair rinse. That was new for me. I did not know you could use it as a hair rinse. So, you know, I'd learn a few things here and there because usually when I'm being taught my herbs, it's like, oh, this is good for this or this is good for that. It doesn't give me like 15, 20 different things that it's good for. So as I'm looking up more information on it, it kind of, I go into this, ah, oh my goodness mode because I myself will learn maybe one or two more things about a plant that I didn't know in the past. So that's really cool. So I hope you enjoy this video and uh, take what you can from it and learn and teach your uh, friends, teach your, I mean, it's fun. It's, it's really fun. Teach the kids, go out and have a, a great time with it. Most, almost all my videos are uh, self-explanatory and kids really learn a lot from them and they're like little sponges they really never forget so we'll see you on the next video folks um, enjoy the red clover and the white clover and uh, have a great evening peace